Jackie had only just finished her move into a quaint little house in the Irish countryside. The last of her boxes was unpacked, and at last she was ready to start her life anew as a writer in this beautiful, peaceful setting. She was baking a lasagna as the autumn night fell, and opened the window to let cool air flood into her hot kitchen. Fifty meters away, on the nearest gravel road, her eye caught something peculiar. It was tall, and at first she thought it to be a street lamp, but it had four legs. It was an animal. The creature moved a little closer, revealing itself better in the dull glow of the street lights. It was a horse, with a man atop it and he was missing a head. Jackie couldn't look away. She couldn't believe what she was seeing. Had there been an accident, she hesitated, wondering if she should rush out to help or call for it. But this was no ordinary horse. It was a jet black mare with glowing blue eyes. It turned to reveal that in his arms, the rider carried his own head. It was a disgusting, rotten yellow, like moldy cheese. The rider's disembodied face bore a grin from ear to ear. Jackie gasped and took a step back from the window, shutting the blinds. The rider appeared not to be approaching her, but she wouldn't take her chances. She made sure the front door was locked and hid under her bed. This was no accident. This was the supernatural. She was forced to climb out from under her bed when the smell of her lasagna started flooding into the room. Jackie rushed in to turn off the oven, but when she peered outside, the rider was gone. Her oven stayed busy as the next morning she made a batch of cookies to deliver to her next door neighbor introduce herself to the neighborhood. She tapped on the door and it creaked open with little hesitation. Uh, hi. I'm Jackie. I'm your new neighbor. I thought I'd come say hi and give you this batch of cookies I made. She said cheerfully, putting behind her the terror of the night before. Oh, come in, come in, dear. The older woman's son. My name's Ida. It's a pleasure to meet you. What are these? Oatmeal chocolate chip? Perfection. Have you gotten to know any of the other neighbors yet, or am I lucky number one? Well, Ida, you're certainly the first that I've visited. Although I did see another fellow outside my house last night. Oh, was he on horseback, dear? Ida smiled. How, how did you know? Jackie was taken aback. Oh, it's a bit of a girls club around here, my dear. Not too many men live on this street. No, no, you've seen the Dullahan, I'm afraid. The Dullahan? Yep, the Headless Horseman. He's a bit of an eyesore, but he's harmless if you leave him alone. What, is he like a ghost or a spirit? Not sure anyone knows the answer to that one, my dear. Well, what does he want? Why did he appear in front of my house staring at me? Where the Dullahan stops moving, someone will shortly die. Or at least, that's how the legend goes. So, he wants me to follow him? Or is he saying that someone will die on the road in front of my house? Oh, I'm sure I don't know, dear. Pay him no mind, and he won't hurt you. All right, uh, thank you, Jackie said, becoming uncomfortable. Um, I have other, uh, cookies to deliver to some of the other neighbors, but thank you so much for inviting me into your home, and it was great meeting you, Ida. Yes, yes, have a wonderful time. And with that, Jackie left the house. She spent the rest of the day baking more cookies and meeting more neighbors, but she never had a conversation that quite matched the one with Ida. And as again night fell, Jackie found herself thinking of the Dullahan, the Headless Horseman, and what she might do if he were to reappear. Her rehearsal was put to the test as at 10 p.m. the Dullahan appeared again, standing in the same spot out by the highway, its disembodied head offering her a grin from ear to ear. Having been assured that the creature was harmless, Jackie was now excited to investigate. She had her flashlight at the ready and donned her boots and her coat as she made her way out into the fall night. The horse at the edge of her lawn exhaled and a ghostly breath disappeared into the air. It began trotting towards her, but Jackie was confident. The being appeared enormous, but it would not harm her. The horse trotted a little faster and moved to Jackie's right to run past her. She chased after it as it ran around and behind her house. For kilometers and kilometers it went, until it made its way into a wooded area. Jackie pursued. This was only just starting to get interesting. The area she had moved to was known for its swamps, and she appeared to be entering one now. How would someone die in a swamp? Would it be a hiker? 
losing their footing and drowning, or maybe someone was soon to be dragged out there and murdered. The horse and its spectral rider galloped over the fen, pushing reeds to the side in a ghostly wind. Jackie had tucked her rain pants over her boots and began wading in after it. It wasn't all that deep. It was difficult to imagine someone drowning here. The rider made it to the base of a cliff that towered over the fen. He stopped, turned around, lifted his head to his shoulders, and faded away. Goosebumps were running down Jackie's extremities. So this was the place. These jagged rocks just at the base of this cliff, she thought to herself. She pulled out the GPS on her phone and took note of her location. I'll come here tomorrow and put up warning signs so that no one falls off the cliff. I guess that wouldn't prevent a murder though, but surely any small thing she could do that might help was worth it. Jackie was a woman of her word, and in the morning, after a good night's rest, she returned with caution tape and signs. She propped them up about the swamp, warning any potential onlookers of a drowning hazard, and on the cliff, a falling hazard. But if foul play was to be involved, well, that was more difficult. Jackie didn't know how she would know when the murder was going to occur, if there was one. Could it be days, weeks, months, years? She really had no idea of the time frame it was from when the Dullahan appeared to when someone died. She simply couldn't help herself. She was going to have to patrol this area for the next few nights, maybe even the weeks to come. If a death could be prevented, surely it was the right thing to do. That night, at two in the morning, Jackie awoke. She had to use the bathroom, but she nearly peed her pants when out her bedroom window she noticed the grinning cheese face of the Dullahan. It was so close, it was almost pressed up against the glass. Had she sensed it while asleep? Was this the real reason she awoke? The man's eyes were looking in different directions, and his tongue licked away in the air. Why is he appearing to me? Jackie was horrified. The headless horseman let out a silent laugh and ran toward the swamp. It must be happening, Jackie realized. She scrambled to throw on her boots, her rain pants, and her jacket, almost forgetting her flashlight, but grubbing it moments before fleeing from her front door. No one could possibly be hiking this late at night. She was about to witness an attempted murder, and it was up to her to stop it. The Dullahan had already disappeared, but Jackie didn't need its guide. She had memorized the spot well, and with the beam of her flashlight shining, she navigated to it flawlessly. Wading into the water, she looked around, pointing her flashlight behind trees, up on the cliff, to the rocks. No one appeared to be there. She waded out of the swamp. Perhaps no one had arrived yet. Perhaps the dull hen had given her a head start. She turned off her flashlight and waited in the darkness behind a tree. Half an hour passed, and still nothing came. If it was a murderer, Surely they would need to see in this pitch black. There was no moon out tonight. It was truly lightless. Another half an hour passed and Jackie had had enough. Her back was killing her. It was time to pack it in, go home, and check for the body in the morning. She had done all she could and her worry was starting to get to her. She was starting to feel less sure of herself. She flicked on her flashlight to head home, but it didn't turn on. The battery was dead. She maneuvered through her pockets looking for her phone, but she hadn't brought it with her. She had no way of navigating out of the swamp. Luckily, she had an idea of the general direction in which she'd come. She was hiding behind a tree after all, so all she had to do was turn and walk from it in a straight line. The sky was so dark that she had no idea when she'd even left the forest, if she'd left it at all. But she felt like she'd been walking for at least twice as long as it took her to walk into that spot in the forest. There were no ghostly glows, no more signs from the headless horseman. There were lights on her street, however. Surely, one of them would be coming into view soon. Jackie. A voice muttered behind her, its cold breath breaking over the side of her face. She turned to see that for once, both the headless horseman's eyes were locked on her. He lifted his rotten head and placed it atop his neck. Startled by his proximity, Jackie took a step back, stumbled over an unearthed tree root, and fell off the cliff to her death. 
It was a few weeks until her body was discovered on the jagged rocks below. The police couldn't understand why she'd ignored all the signs, all the warnings that had been posted, and figured she must have willingly thrown herself from that cliff.